I'm Andy Malone. I'm a Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. You know, for over 25 years, we've been using usernames and passwords to identify ourselves uh, on various computer systems. The problem with this approach, of course, is that it doesn't prove who you are. It just simply proves that you know the username and passwords. And of course, this is what all about phishing attacks is, that users can come in and try and, or hackers can come in and try and steal your usernames and passwords. But now that we authenticate ourselves with devices and also keys, so you can have these Yubi keys, um, it provides a whole lot of challenges for the would-be hacker on how to get your credentials. But passwordless authentication is the next generation of authentication, and it's very exciting. So in this week's episode of All You Need to Know, we're going to take a look at what it is and how it works in Azure Active Directory. Let's take a look. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over into the admin center here, first of all. And in the admin center, we're really going to kind of focus our attention today on Azure Active Directory. So this is the Azure Active Directory admin center. And I'm going to come up um, to here, first of all. Now, in the Azure Active Directory admin center, of course, I can go into users. Um, and uh, again, you can create user accounts. You can also create uh, guest user accounts here as well. So guest user accounts don't need to be licensed, but they're quite useful if you want to have them collaborate, for example, on products such as uh, Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, and as part of Office 365 groups. Um, in terms of authentication, however, we need to go back into here and uh, scrolling down just a, a couple of interesting areas. If I go into my security area here, we have this new area, it's called authentication methods, and it's currently in preview. So first of all, those FIDO2 keys that I uh, mentioned earlier, those FIDO2 keys, if you want to imp start implementing them, to your users, this is basically where you can uh, set it up. So going into the FIDO2 keys here, I can say, do you want to enable it? Yes, I do. Is it for all users or just some selected users? So at this point, you might want to, you might want to kind of set this up with some, uh, I suppose, some test users, if you will. Oops, I'm sorry, just come back. Um, so you might want to set this up with some test users. So um, I've got some groups here. So uh, I'll kind of scroll down and I'll, let's say, I'll call it the Berlin HR team. Okay, so I'm going to select these guys um, and I'm going to say, yeah, I want to enable it for the Berlin uh, team. Um, so now at this point, I can, um, it's on at the moment. It's not enabled at the moment because I've not um, set it up. But you can see basically this is used for both signing in to, let's say, a Windows 10 machine. And it's also used for strong authentication as well. So do remember that the, the, the key thing about this is it uses public private key cryptography. So the private key is always generated on the, on the key itself, whereas the public key, which is shared freely, um, this is often stored at the vendor. So when the user logs in here, the generated public key is compared, and is compared or matched with the public key in the cloud along with the private key here. And then, of course, you get access. So, um, again, there's no username, there's no password. Uh, essentially, everything is on here. I actually prefer these ones. These have got the fingerprint option. Now, if you are using uh, mobile devices, so iOS, Android, and so on, or even Windows 10, you can also deploy, uh, well, certainly Windows 10 devices, you can deploy technologies like Windows Hello for Business, which I'll cover in a second. So I've selected my uh, groups, my Berlin group. Um, I'm going to, uh, am I going to allow the user to do a self-service setup? Yeah, absolutely, why not? 
Um, so am I going to in enforce some key restrictions? So uh, for example, you might want to set some uh, key restrictions here. So again, for the purpose of this, uh, I'm not going to uh, set that up. Now, the, the key restrictions are if you wanted to block specific keys. So for example, if a, if a user left the company, you might want to block their uh, specific keys. And you can see it's looking for a specific GUID, a globally unique ID, which was unique to that uh, particular key. I'm not going to bother with that just now because I've not uh, I've not configured that. Um, okay, so uh, I'm just going to click on no. So basically, that's all I've done is I've just set this up just now, and I'm going to save those uh, settings. And you can see that this is now enabled Fido two. It's enabled for that specific user. Now, in terms of if I want to use a mobile device. And let's say I've deployed uh, the Microsoft Authenticator. Um, so this is passwordless sign-in for that. Again, there's a few uh, kind of cool things that you can do for this as well. So do I, I, I can set this up to sign in just with this device. So they can have the, their mobile device. They can use facial recognition or a fingerprint along with the um, Microsoft Authenticator passwordless sign-in. So they don't need a username and password. Um, they need to prove their authenticity by using that uh, uh, application. Okay, so that's that's the key thing there. Um, so going back to, um, just going back here a second. Um, so back into security, like I mentioned, you've got these authentication methods here. So you can specify whether you want the user to use the mobile app or are you going to generate text messages? So the text message is basically where it sends a code to the user uh, and the user needs to authenticate uh, through that. So again, this is very, again, very, very cool. You can do this for uh, selected users. Again, you can also do it for selected groups as well. Much more efficient to do to do it with user. And you can see that this is particularly useful for sign-in uh, purposes. Okay. Um, so that is that. Now, the other thing that's down here is password uh, protection. So password protection, this is where you can set a lockout. So if I am using a username and password, this is where you can specify, okay, the, the account lockout threshold. So three, three attempts, let's say, um, I'll say five attempts here. And then uh, after 60 seconds, it will reset. Uh, and then they can try again. So, or you might say, you know, uh, 24 hours or five hours or whatever duration, they have to wait before they can try again. And this again, stops hackers. The other key feature that's in here is custom banned passwords. So again, these might be silly passwords, capital P A dollar dollar W zero R D and so on, one, two, three, four, five. So you, you can set up silly band passwords uh, here. Now, if you're using, or if you're integrating Active Directory with uh, Microsoft Azure 365 or Microsoft 365, you might want to set up password protection for Active Directory. So this is if you're in hybrid mode and you're using Azure AD Connect. I can come in here and I can enable this here. And you can also choose whether you want to enforce that password protection or whether you want to audit it, okay? Um, this is a, a kind of premium feature. So again, you need to make sure that you've got the appropriate uh, license for this, okay? Now, as well as um, passwordless authentication, I wanted to show you some other cool features that are coming or have just been released in um, Azure Active Directory. And I've done a previous video on uh, administrative units. If you haven't had a chance to look at that, definitely look at that. Um, this is new. So external identities. I already mentioned that you can invite guest users into 365. But now, um, again, this is uh, very interesting that you can now set up 
things like different identity providers. So for example, Google, Facebook, and so on. And again, this list is set to grow substantially. So you can uh, use this, you can create what we call flow. And flow, of course, is um, if I go into the Microsoft Home, flow used to be called power, well, power automate rather, used to be called a flow. So basically you can create a flow here through the wizard that basically is if this user logs in with a Facebook account, then they can do this. Um, so we have a whole bunch of identity providers here that you can uh, set up. So uh, if I click on to Google, um, you can specify uh, a, the client ID. So put in the, the Google client ID. You need to basically register for the Google API here. So once you've registered, you put your client IB, ID and you put your secret here, which was provided by uh, Google. Once you've done that, you'll now you'll then be able to accept Google authentication and potentially set up single sign-on for uh, Google users. Also, same idea, you've also got Facebook as well. So again, self-service sign-up for guest users has not been enabled. So for example, if I'm a guest user, uh, let's say accessing Microsoft Teams, so you've gone up, you've set a guest user account, Rather than using having to create that Microsoft account, one of the things you might like to do is use the user's Facebook account. So I can come in here and I, again, you need to get this information from Facebook. So you just register here and it tells you, uh, there's a, a nice white paper here. It tells you exactly how to uh, set this up. So before you start it, you need to add that social identity. Um, add the Facebook to your list of identity providers. And you can find this document, by the way, at docs.microsoft.com. Do remember that this is currently in preview, okay? So this is not fully operational yet, but definitely take a look at it. It's, it's very cool. So once you've set that up and you've saved that here, then you can then start using those uh, providers. And again, there are plans for more. Now, obviously, once you've added in those identity providers, one of the things that you want to do is obviously control um, things like guest permissions. So are you, do you want to limit guest permissions for these users, um, admins and users um, in the guest inviter role? So the guest inviter role is a specific role in Microsoft 365. Members, so can members invite? Guests can invite. I'm thinking, no, that's not good security because it could quickly run away with itself. All right. Um, you can also enable one-time passcode. So this means basically if you're a, a guest user, um, you need to basically put your username or your email address or phone number and it will send you that one-time passcode and you have to authenticate just so that we know that you're genuine. All right. Um, other things that we've got here, self-service sign-up. Uh, again, um, self-service sign-up for user flows. This is new as well. And again, you can then set up some restrictions. So allow invitations to be sent to any domain, which is anyone. Um, deny invitations from a specific domain and you can then put in that specific domain. So if there's that one domain that you don't want uh, uh, signups to come from, or you could allow invitations to the specified domains. So bobsboats.com, blueskyairlines.com, that's probably the most restrictive, yes? So the most inclusive is the default setting uh, here. So once you've made those choices, simply click on save. Okay, now that's just the key thing here. Now I did mention that this session was passwordless authentication. And as I've said, you've seen how you can set that up here in the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. Now the other thing that I want to show you is I want to go back into the 365 Admin Center and I'm going to come down here 
into Endpoint Manager. Endpoint Manager, of course, used to be known as Intune, and Intune was a device and application um, deployment platform. Um, it's recently been rebranded, but one of the things that we can do here in the devices is I can go to the likes of Windows 10, so I can see my Windows platform here, and then I can decide on how I would like my users enrolled into Windows. And one of the features that we can deploy is Windows Hello for Business. So if, you're, if you want to use fingerprints, biometrics, iris scans, and so on, for your uh, remote users, dial-in users, not dial-in, but you know, um, uh, if you've got domain joined users rather, I should say. Um, so we can come here into Windows Hello for Business and this is where you can configure it. So yeah, I'm gonna say, I want to enable Windows Hello for Business. Used a, a trusted platform module, good security. This means that any kind of secrets get stored on the actual chip and never, never get leaked into memory. You can set a pin length if you want to do a pin number. Um, but the one that I'm interested in is I can scroll down here and it says allow biometric uh, authentication, which means I don't need um, a uh, pa password of any kind. I can just use my facial recognition, my phone, my fingerprint, whatever on Windows 10. Uh, you can also use enhanced uh, spoofing, uh, anti-spoofing when available. And again, this really depends on the device that you're using. Um, use security keys for sign-in. So these are the security keys. So yes, because I just set this up in uh, Azure Active Directory, I've enabled those. So that means that my users will be able to use those FIDO2 keys in order to uh, get signed in. So I'm gonna save that policy, okay? So this is now configured, all right? Uh, just close that down. Uh, and the next thing obviously is then I can set a configuration policy and you can specify which users, which groups it's for. Once the users register in Intune or Endpoint Manager as it's now called, of course you can now deploy devices. Uh, and those devices, you can then deploy applications. And of course, one of the things in applications that makes it even more secure is the fact that uh, you can um, do um, uh, conditional access. So conditional access, you can basically say, hey, if this user's in the office, then they don't need to do all the multi-factor authentication. But if they're out of the office, that's when I'm going to need my key. All right, so um, there you go. Just a little look at Azure Active Directory, some of the new passwordless authentication mechanisms, and I just looked at um, Intune or Endpoint Manager. So there you have it. Some of the very cool features of Azure Active Directory and how it's adopting and bringing in technologies like passwordless authentication. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next time. Remember, if you've enjoyed it, click on that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss a thing and I'll see you next time. Okay, take care.